While Wi-Fi 6 is the future of wireless internet, it is currently too expensive for the typical home users. But I think it's about to change. TP-Link is introducing a new line of budget-friendly Wi-Fi 6 routers, Archer AX3000 which cost $129 and Archer AX1500 which cost only $69 at the time of this review. Both are Wi-Fi 6 routers, but AX3000 is 4-stream dual-band Wi-Fi 6 router with a total bandwidth of 3 gigabits per second. And on the other hand, AX1500 has a total bandwidth of 1.5 gigabits per second. So today we are going to be testing and reviewing TP-Link Archer AX3000 Wi-Fi 6 router to see how it performs. I will also leave the link to the Wi-Fi router in the description below. So the router package includes a Wi-Fi router, a setup instructions, a power adapter, an Ethernet cable, and warranty information. Now let's look at the features. The router supports 3 gigabits of total bandwidth, 802.11ax Wi-Fi 6 standard, powered by Intel dual core processor, MU-MIMO, OFDMA technology, 1024-QAM, and the router supports dual band 5 GHz and 2.4 GHz with speed up to 2400 megabits per second and 574 megabits per second respectively. It also has four 1 gig Ethernet ports for local network, 1 gig WAN port for internet connection, 1 USB port, and other great features like guest network, parental control, firewall, WPS, and more. The TP-Link Archer AX3000 Wi-Fi router uses Wi-Fi 6 technology featuring Intel. Wi-Fi 6 technology achieves up to three times faster speeds, higher capacity and lower latency compared to the previous generation of Wi-Fi 5 routers. The Wi-Fi router is powered by Intel dual core processor, ensures your experience is smooth, buffer free 4K streaming and online gaming and provides greater network capacity and efficiency. The TP-Link Archer AX3000 uses OFDMA technology to organize the flow of data to talk to all your smart home, streaming and gaming devices while simultaneously reduces lag by up to 75%. With MU-MIMO, multiple users can access the router simultaneously without decrease in bandwidth, which means you can connect more devices than ever before. It increases Wi-Fi data rates by up to 60%. To enjoy lag-free online gaming, 4K and even 8K streaming. The router also supports beam forming and BSS color work together to adapt Wi-Fi coverage to your home and focus signal strength towards your devices, which minimizes signal interference for stronger, more reliable Wi-Fi coverage. Now let's look at the design of the router. Router is made of plastic and has four external antennas two of which are assigned to 2.4 GHz and two of them are assigned to 5.8 GHz band. On the back of the router you will see four 1 gig Ethernet ports and one 1 gig WAN port, one USB port, WPS and a reset option along with power button and power plug-in. And the router has enough ventilation holes for rapid heat transfer. Now let's look at the router setup and admin center. Setting up this router was very simple and easy. Router comes with great manual instructions on how to set up this Wi-Fi router. Also, router supports iOS and Android apps. To my surprise, router has a very clean interface. You have an option to either use basic settings or choose advanced settings to configure the router. So we are going over the settings very quickly to see what are the available options. Let's first review the advanced settings. Under status tab, you will find information about the internet connection including number of wireless and wired devices connected to the Wi-Fi router. Also, you will find wireless information, guest network information, USB devices information, CP performance information, along with memory utilization information. Moving on to the network tab. Here you have again information about your internet connection. You can also configure your LAN network here, along with IPTV, DACP, dynamic DNS, and static routing. Next on to the operation mode. Here you can set up your router to function as router or access point. Next under wireless settings, you can set up wireless settings for both 2.4 GHz band and 5 GHz band. You can also configure SSID, password, transmit power, select channel, 
encryption and other settings. You can also set up WPS. You can also configure wireless schedule to turn off or on your wireless. Moving on to the guest network, configuration allows you to set up guest network on both 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands. Under USB sharing, you can set up USB storage device to be configured as network storage device or media server. You can also scan connected USB devices. Here you can also set up the time machine. Under parental control, to set up different user profiles, you can also set up QoS. Under security settings, you can set up a firewall, access control, IP and MAC binding. Under network forwarding, you have an option to set up ALG, DMZ, virtual server, port triggering and UPnP. You can also set up IPv6, VPN server and Smart Life Assistant which lets you control your Wi-Fi router using Amazon Alexa. And finally under system tools you can set up time settings, control router LEDs and diagnostics. And you can also see router firmware version, build information and hardware information in the bottom. So there are plenty of router settings available to be configured. This router has great all-round features. Now let's dive into Wi-Fi speed and range test. So router is placed in the basement storage room. It has concrete walls around it and it is in the lowest part of the house. So I will be testing router connection on different parts of the house and floors to see how well it performs in terms of speed and coverage. Okay, so here as you can see on the phone screen, we have TP-Link 5G and TP-Link 2.4G are the two Wi-Fi connections from this router. And for the reference Wi-Fi name, Batman is a Netgear Orbi AC3000 mesh Wi-Fi setup. I have 100 by 100 megabits per second Verizon Fios connection. And standing right next to the router, I'm getting full connection speed, which is great confirming that Wi-Fi router is working properly. Now for the second test, I'm standing 30 feet away from the router in the basement, with couple of walls between the Wi-Fi router and the phone. I have so far solid Wi-Fi connection with still 100% speed. Now let's move from the basement to the main floor of the house and do a third Wi-Fi speed and connection test. I'm able to connect to 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands without any problem. Again, so far Wi-Fi connection is strong with excellent 100% connection speed. Now let's move to the second floor of the house and do a fourth Wi-Fi speed and coverage test. Here we have two floors and few walls between the Wi-Fi router and the phone. Again, as you can see on the screen, so far the signal strength is strong for both 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands. Wi-Fi speed is still excellent and 100% signal strength. Now the final and toughest test. For this I'm going outside the house. Here we have a stone wall, main floor and few regular walls between the router and the phone. And distance is close to 60 feet from the router. Here Wi-Fi signal strength has dropped a lot but the phone is still able to connect to 2.4 GHz band with reasonable speed. But 5 GHz band is no longer available. Now I'm going to move away from the house and see if 2.4 GHz band is still able to maintain its connection. Here I am now close to 15 feet away from the house. And to my surprise, I'm still able to pull some Wi-Fi signals and very limited bandwidth. So I guess we are hitting the limit here. But overall, very impressive results. Now we are going to conduct a Wi-Fi router USB storage test over Wi-Fi. For this, I have connected USB 3 drive to the router and shared it as a network storage. Currently I am connected to 5 GHz channel with speed up to 866 megabits per second because that is a limit of my MacBook Pro wireless card. So for the test we are going to transfer 3 GB file from USB storage drive to the laptop which is sitting right next to the router. To my surprise results is good as you can see on the screen. 
but the results will vary for everyone else. But it will give you some general idea of what kind of performance you can expect if you decide to use USB drive as a network storage. One thing to point out here that Wi-Fi router gets really hot after a few hours of general use. So at this point, I cannot say how the heat will affect the router's hardware and performance in the long run. And there's no active cooling or fan in the Wi-Fi router. So something to keep an eye on. Overall, TP-Link Archer AX3000802.11AX Wi-Fi 6 router performed extremely well in this review. It features Wi-Fi 6, 802.11AX and 4 1GB Ethernet ports, 1GB WAN port for internet, powered by dual-core Intel processor, MU-MIMO, OFDMA technology, 1024QAM, USB, VPN, NAT, guest network and other features are hard to find in this price point. TP-Link Archer AX3000 Wi-Fi 6 router delivers great coverage and had no problem covering 5000 square feet house with good Wi-Fi speed in all areas of the house. I highly recommend this router to anyone who's in the market for an affordable 802.11ax Wi-Fi 6 router. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.